Good morning and welcome to San Francisco Mandarin Baptist Church. Today we are going to talk about something that we can all relate with the Thessalonians. The Thessalonian Christians were going through persecutions, afflictions, hardships, and they believe that because of their continued suffering in this life, their tribulation had already begun. From my early childhood, I heard about the Antichrist. And in the many years that I've been a Christian, I've heard many of my Christian friends say that this person or this person or so-and-so could potentially be the Antichrist. In the 1940s, people believed that Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist. Now there are some people who think that the Antichrist could be a U.S. president or even the Pope of the Catholic Church. However, the fact remains is that we really do not know for sure. In fact, the Antichrist may or may not even be alive today. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, John says, Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming. And already many such antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. So you see, there will be many deceivers. These such antichrists, as John puts it. But the Bible says there will come a day where the antichrist, and we will learn today, also known as the man of lawlessness, will be revealed to the world. Today we will study what Paul has to say about him. But before we open God's word this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's all pray. Lord God, we come before you this morning and we come with a humble heart. We thank you for all the provisions you continue to provide for us. We thank you for all the blessings, your grace, your mercy, and your love. Father, you are the God Almighty who is in control over all things. And Father, you also know all of our hardships, all of our sufferings. And Lord, we pray that at this time, help us to set those things aside. Help us not to be distracted and help us to commit this time for you to dedicate our time for worship. Help us to hear your word. And Lord, help us to seek your face. And we pray that we will obey everything that you've mentioned to us. And we pray that we will be obedient. We will be submissive to your word in everything. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So if you have your Bibles in front of you today, Please open to 2 Thessalonians. We'll be looking at chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 12. Let's read this together. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled, either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter, supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits in God's temple proclaiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you about this? And you know what currently restrains him, so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one now restraining will do so until he is out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth, and will bring him to nothing at the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working with every kind of miracle, both signs and wonders, serving the lie. 
and with every wicked deception among those who are perishing. They perish because they did not accept the love of the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, so that all will be condemned, those who did not believe the truth, but delighted in unrighteousness. So the Bible teaches us that at some point in the future, an evil ruler called the Antichrist, also known as the man of lawlessness, is going to step onto the platform of the world stage, and he will take control of the world and everyone in it for a brief period of time. And as we look at back into uh, verse 1, Paul says, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled, either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter, supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits in God's temple proclaiming that he himself is God. So Paul reminds the Thessalonians that the day of the Lord has not come and to not let anyone deceive you in any way and in fact in verse 3 paul says these that they are two specific events that must happen before jesus returns so let's take a look at these so the first is when the apostasy comes now this word is actually closely related to a falling away or a rebellion and in fact, in the Greek, this actually refers to a specific event that will occur. And the second event that will need to take place is the revealing of the man of lawlessness. Paul uses this word to inform that a day is coming when the Antichrist, who, has, who is right now being concealed, and hidden from public view, but he will appear on the world scene in the future. And it will be as if a stage curtain has been pulled out of the way so that he can make his grand appearance and his entrance. So only when those two specific events occur, that's when the evil ruler known as the man of the man of lawlessness known as the antichrist will come to bring destruction now the bible says he will do this by opposing and exalting himself above every so-called god and every object of worship and he will do this by proclaiming himself to be god now, what's so shocking about all of this is that when the Antichrist is finally revealed to the world, he will be welcomed with open arms. I mean, you would think that the world would be against or even antagonistic against him. But no, he will be fully accepted and he will be completely revered. And again, this points to the apostasy, this falling away of society's attitude towards Christianity and Christians. So once the anti-godly and the anti-Christian sentiments are complete, so the world will now be ready to receive the Antichrist. Now, some of you may wonder why the term the man of lawlessness. Good question. First, we need to understand what the word lawlessness is. Sin in the Greek is the word anomia. And translating the word anomia actually means without law. That's what sin is. Sin is without law. And it carries the idea of a lawless attitude. So in the original language, 
the, the term man of lawlessness, it tells us that this is an individual that is without law. It is a lawless attitude. But it's not, but that's not all. He is a person who is against Christ. So hence the word Antichrist. The Antichrist is given the title man of lawlessness because he will oppose and he will be against every way of God, every way of Jesus, and every way of his laws. Daniel chapter 7 also speaks about the Antichrist. And it depicts him as a man, as a boastful king, a very, very proud king, who will try to change the set times and the laws, the laws of the entire world. He will come offering a false peace to the world. And with his charismatic personality, with his incredible promises and, and with his breathtaking miracles, he will try to unite all the nations politically, economically, and religiously under his leadership. And at the same time, he will make a covenant with Israel for three and a half years. And after three and a half years, the man of lawlessness will break his covenant with Israel. And he will set himself up as God and demand worship from everyone. Now, don't forget that it is Satan who is working behind the scenes. He's kind of like pulling the strings, if you if, if, sort of speak. Because Satan unlike God, unlike Jesus, is unable to become a man. So by possessing and controlling the Antichrist, Satan can be worshipped. And this is the very reason why the Antichrist is called a man of lawlessness. Everything in the Antichrist will be opposed to God and everything that God represents. Paul says, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Don't let anyone to think that they are Jesus or they are the Savior. The Lord Jesus will not return until the Antichrist appears. Let's continue. Let's look at verse 5 to verse 8. Paul says, don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you about this? And you know what currently restrains him, so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one now restraining will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth and will bring him to nothing at the appearance of his coming. So Paul continues and reminds the Thessalonians and in extension to all Christians, he says, don't you remember that these are the, these are the things I have already taught you? And Paul says, I have taught you all of these things that Satan, that the Antichrist are right now being restrained. But in their time, the Antichrist will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. In other words, as the world becomes more and more opposed to God, becomes more anti-Christian, becomes more anti-godly, it will set up for the Antichrist to be revealed. So in verse 7, there's a term called the mystery of lawlessness, and it actually denotes something that is hidden for a time before God chooses to reveal it. And at the proper time, uh, the one, meaning the Holy Spirit, who is now restraining the Antichrist, the Holy Spirit will be taken out of the way. Now, Understand this, when the Bible says the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, don't misunderstand this as 
the Holy Spirit is leaving us or the Holy Spirit is forsaking us. This is not what this means. Simply, it means that the Holy Spirit will allow the full revealing of the Antichrist to appear. But the Holy Spirit will be present on the earth during this time. Because there are many who are saved and there will be people who will continue to serve God during this period. And this can't happen without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit's influence is completely restrained, it says in verse 8, the Antichrist will be revealed. Now in the book of Revelation, John actually describes the extraordinary power of the Antichrist. I know a lot of us think of the Antichrist as this regular person, this human being. But actually, the Antichrist will have these powers, and these powers will be very supernatural, and it will make the whole world to believe that he is God. And in fact, he will also try to make the whole world to worship a powerful political figure, which is known to be the first beast. So in spite of this great power and his great influence, the Bible says when Jesus returns, he will put an end to the Antichrist's wicked ways with the breath of his mouth. Paul continues verse 9 to verse 12. The coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working with every kind of miracle, both signs and wonders serving the lie and with every wicked deception among those who are perishing. They perish because they did not accept the love of truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie so that all will be condemned those who did not believe the truth, but delighted in unrighteousness. Let's go back to verse 9. So Paul warns all of us that the Antichrist will even perform these supernatural signs and wonders. And these wonders are the miracles that he will perform and to try to prove that he is God. So this means that when he finally appears, he, he will come already with all these powers that are truly extraordinary, that, that will be completely from out of this world. And people will be made to believe that he is God. When Satan finally has the opportunity to introduce the Antichrist, to the world, he will use deceptive signs and wonders to show that he is God. And, and the sad thing is, many people will believe that. Many people will believe the Antichrist as Savior. And as they do, they will perish because they did not accept the love of the truth. See, some of us, we would rather hear something that pleases us, that gratifies our desires and satisfies our sins. We would rather swim in all these lies because we don't want to hear the truth. We don't, know, we don't want to know the truth. And even though the truth can sound unpleasant, because honestly, we may not even understand why things are the way things are. We don't understand why God makes certain decisions, and we may not even agree with some of them. So as a result, we want to believe that God doesn't care. Maybe God doesn't exist because simply we didn't get what we wanted. And therefore, he's not here. 
And we would rather accept the lies. We would rather ex accept the deceptions rather than accept the love of the truth. As a boy, when I was in church, my favorite thing wasn't to go to my youth group or to hang out with my church friends, but actually it was instead to attend the worship service on Sundays. You know, I, I remember the sanctuary as I'm speaking right now, the nice comfy uh, pew chairs, and it was warm and inviting. And at the same time, it provided a sense of tranquility, a sense of peace every time I was in that space. And when I look back and, and now reminiscing myself as this boy again, I remember having never sat with the other kids in my youth group. Because you know how kids are. They like to hang around with each other all the time, you know, with these cliques. I wasn't like that. Maybe, you, maybe I was a bit strange, but I wanted to sit either alone or sometimes I would be sitting with my parents at the worship service. Now, here's the reason. I would do that even though my dad would sometimes ask me, how come you're not sitting with the other kids? Why are you sitting with us? And I, I didn't say anything, but deep inside, it, it was because the other kids were always talking and chatting in the back and never really paying attention. And you, you know how kids are, but actually I was very interested in what the pastor had to say every Sunday. And I remember one particular Sunday, the pastor said this once in his message. He said, by hearing a Christian pray, you can tell the spiritual maturity of the person. Think about it. He says, you can tell the spiritual maturity of a person by hearing the person pray. You know, at that time, I, I didn't really know what he was talking about. And honestly, I didn't really put much thought into it. But now as a pastor, I, I can understand, I can relate what he was saying. See, we can tell what is important to a person by the things that he or she prays about. We can see their hearts by what they pray for and why. If a person realizes how sinful he is, he will be asking, he will be begging God to forgive him and to change him. A person who doesn't see that will never ever pray about that. If a person really wants to live to please God, he would always ask God that he would have the grace, that he would have the power to agree what God desires in his life. He will pray for the faith that he will trust God in everything in all his provisions. But those that are deceived will only pray for the things that they desire. They will only pray for health. They will only pray for money. They will only pray for success. And they will completely neglect to ask God for his forgiveness and to be changed. And we talked about this, that God's will is for us, for Christians to be sanctified. And so you, you have these Christians who will live their whole lives thinking that's what makes a true Christian is to pray for their self-serving desires. Now, I said this before and I'll say this again. There is nothing wrong to pray about those things. Because 
let's face it, we all have needs on this earth. But if that is all we pray about, and we never pray and to ask God to change us and to help us to be more like Jesus, and we never ask for His forgiveness, for us to turn from our ways, turn from our sins, and, and to turn to His ways, then that's a big problem. Now, I speak about all of this with a complete earnestness and a complete truthfulness. And I do pray that whatever comes out from my mouth, it will be biblical. But the Bible says the unbelievers, the non-Christians will be deceived. And this is true, as it says in the Bible. And this is why Paul is reminding the Thessalonians about this. But also, he is reminding the Thessalonians because there were some Christians in Thessalonica that they were going astray. And so, yes, there will be some so-called Christians who will also be deceived. Yes, some Christians will be caught up by Satan's lies. Now, why is that? Because again, we talked about the Antichrist as this person who will appear in the world stage. And when he is revealed, he will perform supernatural wonders to appease and to satisfy people's sins and their human desires. And these powers that the Antichrist will draw will be from Satan. But the thing is that the people will be attracted to that because they will be getting what they want. Now, it will draw everyone away from Jesus. It will draw everyone away from God, except the biblical and faithful Christians. Christians, if you look around you and, and you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you are receptive to what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you will know but without a doubt that we are living in a time when society's attitude towards God is radically changing. The world is priming itself, it's preparing itself to completely open its arm and to receive the Antichrist who's going to oppose God and bring destruction to the entire world. Now the deception is already spreading. And it is spreading now as we speak, through the news, through social media, our educational institutes, such as schools, universities, and even the books that students are reading, and that maybe some of us are reading. And all these are priming each and every person to accept what the Antichrist will bring. Because he's going to lie to all of us. And making us think that he will be the savior. But actually, he will be the one who will bring destruction. And everyone will fall for his deceptions. Everyone. Except the faithful Christians. Because only they will know the Antichrist's real intention. If you're watching this and you, in your heart, you believe that you are a faithful, true Christian, then you have no need to be afraid. You have no need to be worried. For none of this will affect those who know Jesus Christ. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you truly believe that He alone is your master and he alone is the one who was the ultimate sacrifice for your sins you needn't be worried 
But the Bible is clear for those who are without Jesus in their lives. The Bible says they will fall under the supernatural signs and wonders of the Antichrist. They will succumb to his power and they will believe everything that he says. Please realize, everyone, please realize what a critical time that you are living in right now. The Antichrist is coming. But Jesus is also coming. And if you are not a Christian and you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to do that today so that you will not be captured in the delusion and the devastation. And my encouragement for all those Christians who are out there, if you know in your heart that you will only follow Jesus in every aspect of your lives, you won't follow anyone else. You won't follow even yourself, but you will only follow Jesus. Then praise God. Truly praise God. But the question is, how about the people that you love? The people that you care for? What are you, what are you going to do to ensure that they escape the evil days that will be approaching? I want you to know that it is time for you to reach out to your non-Christian friends and family members and to let them know about Jesus. Pray and ask God to give you an opportunity. That's all you need to do so that you can speak to them, that God will fill you with the right words as you share with them to make Jesus their Lord and Savior. Lawlessness all over the world is rising. If you just open your eyes, look around, you can see it everywhere. The Bible says such lawlessness will continue and it will only increase. And when the man of lawlessness comes and appears, he will be welcomed with open arms. Be on your guard and be alert. Again, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the decision is yours to make. But please accept Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. It will be the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. Do that today. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the reminder that the evil days are approaching us. And Father, we pray for your strength. We pray for your wisdom that we will follow nothing but you. We will follow no, no one but Jesus in our lives. Father, we pray that you will give us the yearning to obey your every word. And even though we have trouble to understand or we have trouble to even agree, we do pray that we will submit to you and we will be obedient. Father, I pray also for the non-Christians. I pray that they too will understand the deceptions that are upon them. And it's already appearing in our world and it's only going to get worse so father i pray that you will open their eyes and you will open their hearts so that they will receive jesus today that they that they, they too won't be fallen to the deceptions that the antichrist will bring and lord god we thank you we continue to ask for your forgiveness we continue to pray that you will help us to change help us to turn from our ways Help us to be sanctified, for this is your will in us. And Lord, we continue to pray that for the tithes and offering that we will bring to you right now. And I believe that 
we will do this at the end of the service as usual. But Father, we, we continue to pray and we thank you for all the provisions that you've given us. And we do pray that this will be used so that the gospel of Jesus Christ will continue to flourish and it will spread to everyone in every corner of this earth for your glory. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.